New and potentially dangerous glacial lakes and glacial lake outburst floods are becoming a growing problem throughout the mountain world. As the world continues to warm, glaciers all over the world are receding, often leaving behind in their place a large lake such as the one behind me. Now, 50 years ago, this lake was a glacier. All I would have to do is to walk 10 feet this way, and I would have been on top of the Imja Glacier. But starting in about the 60s, 1962, the glacier started to recede year by year, growing, growing, leaving behind a lake in its place. A lake which today is more than a square kilometer in size, has more than 35 million cubic meters of water, and continues to grow at an alarming 35 meters per year. This is the fastest growing lake in Nepal, if not throughout the entire Hindu Kush Himalayas. So the Peruvians have more than 50 years of experience in controlling and managing dangerous glacial lakes. And we think that this is an experience that needs to be shared throughout the world. That's where we got the idea to bring not only Peruvians, but glaciologists, glacial lake specialists, and social scientists from more than 13 countries around the world here to Nepal in the field to work with local people to try and find solutions. What is different from this expedition is we're not just holding a conference in a city and publishing proceedings and all going home. We're actually bringing these 31 scientists to Nepal, trekking through the Kumbu, the Mount Everest area, up to Imja Lake to actually study the lake, be at the lake, exchange experiences and collaborate in terms of ideas, in terms of how to control and manage these glacial lakes. This is a uh, group coming from very different countries, Asia, South America, the US, Europe. And the common goal is to understand these lakes, share what's happening in our different countries, and that's happening already. And it was just fantastic you know, to see uh, Angrita uh, talking to Cesar, who is the glaciologist from Peru, and Rita from Nepal. It was just sparks coming out of the conversation. This is just the second day, and uh, if everything follows like this, it's just going to be very interesting, very powerful trip. meters and it's the first time that we get to meet a community. And what was interesting to me at the meeting with the community yesterday was the perception that they've been left out of a lot of the scientific discussions. What we want is a result, not a problem. Yeah, we know there was a problem, but we need our solutions too. So what is the next step? So what can we do? To this point, they have sort of been left out of the communication loop. So there seems to be a strong need to translate or synthesize that very technical information so that they can really begin to understand the situation with the lakes. What we would like to do is invite uh, as many of you as possible up to our camp so that you are part of this dialogue from the very beginning. We are scientists, both uh, natural and, and social. We must be seeing ourselves as being at the service of the communities and not the other way around. We now made it to Imja Lake Base Camp. We're camped here at about 5,000 meters. We're pressing on to the lake today. We will conduct interviews, talk to local people, and start to unravel some of the questions about Imja Lake. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. We are standing on one of the lateral moraines. In 1964, the ice surface was something like this. So you can imagine, you know, how thick the ice was and how rapidly we got the uh, melting. With the ice core of these moraines and their melting over the next few years, it could totally change the landscape that you see behind us with these moraines, which is holding back the lake water. So it's necessary to try to get an idea of how the evolution of this landscape may progress over the next five years or so, because in five years it could be much more dangerous than it is now. We've also had a lot of uh, opportunity for our colleagues from the Andes, from Peru, to observe the uh, situation here and to think about their long experience in dealing with managing these lakes. One of the best things that we can do is to enable them to work with the community here and to study the, the problem here and to help the community come up with solutions. It's been a good experience for me to see the leaks in uh, Nepal and from uh, the experiences we shared with a group of uh, people from different countries here, I could use some of their techniques in like studying the leaks in Bhutan as well. Sharing of their experience has been quite well, fantastic to us. Perhaps we are going to manage our glacier lakes and diffusers. As we go back down towards Kathmandu, the group is going to continue talking about what more do we need to understand in terms of the social structures here, the political structures and the physical structure of the lake and what might be done. But it's been great having the Peruvians, the Central Asians along to bring insights from those other regions and help us learn what might work here in Nepal. Hey!